This video is about the gold rush, and we're going to be looking at how the United States West got really big, really fast. The story starts really back in 1848 when California was added to the United States after the Mexican-American War. At that time, there were approximately 10 or so thousand um, Mexican, or now United States citizens, living in California. These um, Mexican or Spanish descent people that were living out there were called Californios. They were Catholic, they spoke Spanish, but they had moved out to California mostly because they were wealthy. They owned the land, they worked the land on these ranches, and the poorer people that lived out in California worked for the um, wealthier people. So there was a, a large income gap. However, these Californios were now United States citizens. When California was added to the country, they became United States citizens and they were insured, according to the government, all the rights that United States citizens would have. So these Californios were living out there, working the land, having a nice life, when this guy named James Sutter found a gold nugget while he was building a sawmill. Sutter was one of the first actual United States citizens of United States descent to move out there. There weren't very many back in 1848. He had tried to keep it a secret, but others found out and started to look for gold. And once the, once the idea that gold is in California gets out, all of a sudden people are going to be starting to move to California. The year that most people moved out to California to look for gold was 1849. So all those people got the nickname the 49ers. It was an incredible amount of people that went out there. More than 80,000 people moved to California in 1849. And as I told you before, there was only about 10,000 people living out in California prior to the gold rush. In just two years, California's population is going to be over 100,000. You're talking a, a massive population boom. And California's football team today, the San Francisco 49ers, gets the nickname from this time period. That's how important it was to the state of California that we still talk about it today. So one big issue when people started to move to California to mine for gold is the rivers. That's where the gold was. So people wanted access to these rivers so they could look for gold. Water rights are the legal rights to use a river, and that's, that's what it's called. So landowners in California had all the water rights, and it was also illegal to stop water that would be going through someone's property. Now, when people started looking for gold, they got all nutty because they were hoping to strike a rich, so people weren't acting rationally. They started stealing people's water rights. They'd go into their land when they weren't supposed to. They'd cut off their river. They'd dam it up so they could have more and people would have less. It was really awful. And people were out of control with stealing each other's water rights. And there would be fights. There would be lots of violence because people would be getting in each other's way and stealing each other's access to water. I don't think these two lions are fighting over water rights, but you get the picture. That's kind of what it might look like, people fighting over water rights. In addition to this interesting battle over rivers, it seems kind of silly, but um, there was also major issues with, with mining towns. As I told you before, there's only 10,000 people living in California, that, not even enough for but less than the population of Ellington. So there weren't really cities back in California back then. So when 80,000 people suddenly moved to California, these little mini towns, little cities, start springing up all over the place called mining towns. Um, when people think there's going to be gold, these mining towns would just kind of come up out of nowhere. And then when gold was not discovered, if it was a bust, they would just kind of go away. The interesting thing about these mining towns was the price of goods. It was really the only place you could buy stuff. So you could sell supplies and food for really whatever you wanted and people would be willing to pay it. So the prices in these mining towns were ridiculous due to a lack of supply and a ton of demand. Another interesting part about these mining towns were the kind of characters that these mining towns sort of attracted. This would be the place where the casinos would be built. This would be the place where the, where the saloons would be built. And people were working hard. There was a lot of stress. People were fighting. They were trying to find this gold. They were getting all their hopes and dreams wrapped up into gold finding. And when things went wrong, well, people would turn to the saloons and to the casinos. And pretty soon you had a pretty sketchy area in these mining towns. Trouble and violence soon followed. Because California is not a state, 
There's no police, there's no US intervention, there's no federal law enforcement or anything like that. So there really were no laws. You can imagine bar fights, fist fights, all sorts of trouble happening in these mining towns. So what miners would do is they would band together and they would create their own rules. Um, kind of like mining town rules, I guess. They would say, you know, no fighting, no this, no that. And when someone broke the law, these same miners who had created the rules would enforce the rules. They were called vigilantes. And these vigilantes were self-imposed lawmakers, and they would also dish out the punishment, which would be swift and brutal. You see in this picture here, um, this vigilante is whipping this person on the post out in front of a saloon, probably for some kind of fight or theft, lots of different rules that could be broken. And that was kind of the way the West worked back then. Unfortunately for most 49ers, they didn't find gold. However, they stayed out in California and settled the land, which was good because the West was getting settled. In addition to all these new United States citizens living out in California, you have a, a large increase in the amount of European immigrants and Chinese immigrants that are in California. Either these people came looking for gold, or sometimes these people came looking for freedom and rights because immigrants weren't always accepted in all parts of the United States. And out west, they tended to be treated better and allowed more access to rights. The gold rush only lasted two years, but the impact on California was definitely permanent. By 1850, you only have 15% of Californians that were originally there, those Californios I talked about before. So 85% of the population is this new diverse population. So in conclusion, the gold rush forever changed California. No longer was it this, this peaceful Mexican ranching land where these Californios, these wealthy people of Mexican or Spanish descent lived. In fact, for those Mexican Californios, they were actually treated quite bad and laws um, sort of took away a lot of their wealth and a lot of their rights. They sort of were in charge before the gold rush and after the gold rush, they were almost second class citizens. Today, um, California has a large and diverse population and it really started back in the 1850s. So California was forever changed by the gold rush. Some people struck it rich, most did not. The possibility of gold, however, brought out the worst in some people. There was lots of violence, lots of theft, and it was really a pretty crazy time out in California during 1849. Because of that crazy time, there was a need for law enforcement and vigilantes rose to the occasion. They dished out cruel punishment, swift punishment due to the absence of law enforcement. In the end, thanks to the gold rush, the American West got many stereotypes. The stereotype of being wild and crazy and the absence of law. Over time, however, that sort of image goes away and California is added by a state. The 49ers helped settle down um, the West and over time the Western frontier is tamed and today it's, you know, California is the biggest state in the United States. So that sort of all begins during 1849.